Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come like water and nourish our souls. Come like fire and cleanse us from all fear and doubt. Come like wind and renew and transform us. Amen. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. That's the opening sentence from our reading from the book of Acts. And I've got to confess, it makes me sad. In a literal sense, many of us can relate to what that sentence describes. Because of COVID-19, it's still not prudent for us to be together in one place. Many of us are confined to our homes. And here in Baltimore County, we can't gather in our sacred places just yet. And so it feels difficult to talk about togetherness to regathering, much less celebrate a great feast like our patron feast, Pentecost. But in another sense, we really are in one place. As Debbie Thomas wrote in a recent column, that we are in a hard place, a hollow place, a place of vulnerability and grief, we are together in our uncertainty, together in our loss, together in our hopes and fears, across all sorts of distances, geographical, cultural, socioeconomic. We are bound together as one people, one humanity, one planet, facing a common threat that knows no borders. My friends, that is a description of what it means to be together in one place, that has nothing to do with physical location. You might remember, for those of you who grew up with the King James Version, that that phrase actually was usually translated as all together in one accord. The Greek word that is used there, it can be together with one accord, or it could also be with one mind or one passion. One commentator gives this really beautiful description of the use of this Greek word. So it's this compound of two words meaning to rush along and in unison. The image is almost musical. A number of notes are sounded, which while different, they harmonize in pitch and tone. And kind of like the instruments of a great concert under the direction of a wonderful director, so the Holy Spirit blends together the lives of members of Christ Church. I love that description. And we're actually seeing a, a virtual way of how our director of music is blending the voices of members of our church. And I actually think about Blair telling our choir and others that each of their voices are unique and different, that they sing different parts, not all of their notes and rhythms, tones, sometimes words are the same all of the time. But when brought together, they make a beautiful song. And so in the same way, God knits his church together with a variety of colors and flavors, strengths, weaknesses, visions, gifts. God brings them all together with one mind, with one passion, with one accord to make a glorious song. And so when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all in one accord. And as the day wore on, their sense of unity of purpose, it increased. The Spirit appeared among them and entered into them, and not only did their lives change, but so did the lives of so many others who gathered in Jerusalem. And if you look at the rest of the story, so did the lives of billions of other people, including you and me. And so what happened at Pentecost, it was no mystical inner personal experience of the Spirit limited to just a couple of people. It was an outpouring of God's energy that touched every person there. And what's so critical to remember is that what happened to them in whatever manner, it's never stopped. People continue to be imbued with the, the Spirit, whether they want to acknowledge it or not. And sometimes, frankly, we don't. Sometimes we just as soon not acknowledge that the Spirit pokes and prods us, calls us to do things and to 
go places that we'd rather not. It's because we've become accustomed to doing things our own way, that we'd rather not have our way to be disturbed. Sometimes we don't know that we've simply become too settled to react. But most of the time, I think we really do know. I think we hear that still small voice. We feel that prompting, that urging, but something holds us back. We'd rather settle for the known rather than the unknown, and we allow fear to take hold. And so the call of the Spirit remains unanswered. But I hope that the Pentecost story compels us, because it's a story for this time, for this moment, for our time. As we continue to face the coronavirus pandemic as people of faith, man, we're gonna be tempted to grow complacent or to despair or to turn in on ourselves and forget that we're part of a much greater whole, that we live in a world where words have become toxic, where powers and principalities threaten to divide and destroy us. The troubles of our day, they're global. And if we don't learn the art of teaching, leading, and loving the world into how to be in one accord, We've not only missed our calling, but the world, who knows? You know, it's no small thing that the Holy Spirit breathed those first disciples of Christ out into the world, and in so doing, changed it. In the face of difference, God compels his people to engage. In the face of fear, Jesus breathed forth peace and out of the heart of deep difference, God birthed the church. So me, we grow to all be in one accord, with one passion, with one mind, with one spirit, one hope in God's call to us to be the body of Christ. This is our time. This is our Pentecost.